for maintaining the awareness and the response capability of an already implemented tsunami warning system, simulation exercises should be periodically organized. Different responsibilities and tasks of the emergency personnel involved in monitoring activities are reviewed, assuring the communication in real time of the emergency relief crews is about the probabilities of producing the disasters and assurance of warning the population. The existence of the emergency stock of materials and means of interventions, located in the vicinity of the prone areas of natural hazards, including tsunamis, allows an optimized relief activity after a disaster in the region, assuring a successful intervention activity and minimization of loss of lives and damages to the properties. It is crucial to have sufficient stock, including tents, blankets, medicine, available in order to support people that have fled from the tsunami. An efficient preparedness measure depends of timely early warnings issued by the authorities following an earthquake with high magnitude, which often constitute the triggering factor for the tsunami. Area that had been affected by similar events in the past should create a disaster prevention platform, it could help in better identifying vulnerable areas and or weaknesses in preparedness activities. Evacuation routes should be generated on the basis of flood maps and availability of shelters. If no natural shelters, hills, mounds, berms, are available it is advisable to construct vertical shelters. It should be clear that living in houses which are built 1 to 3 meters above sea levels, a high level of preparedness is required in the case a tsunami hit. Already established safety zones, implemented in the planning of the coastal areas, will lower the risk of the highly vulnerable areas, both by earthquakes tremors and tsunami waves, therefore a multi-hazard approach in emergency planning would be advantageous. Preceding disasters, like a heavy earthquake, could, partly, destroy evacuation routes and assembly places, therefore a multi-hazard approach, earthquake plus tsunami, should put particular emphasis on having such routes and places secured. Moreover, the emergency planning should take into account that subsequent disasters or inconveniences may happen and request alteration of early plans, i.e. heavy rainfalls which, in turn, produce landslides and mudflows. Subsequently, people in emergency shelters had again to be redistributed in, different, safe locations. In the particular case of Stromboli-type volcanic island, due to the continuous activities of the volcano, constant preparedness is absolutely required, that is availability of responsible persons issuing the alarms, instruction non-residents, keeping free the evacuation routes. On small islands telecommunication backup system should be kept operating in order to start rescue operations. The nuclear facilities located in the earthquake-prone areas should have drilled in advance holes for vent of hydrogen released from the water cooling down reactor. The holes should be positioned at the top of the main building covering the nuclear reactor and containment vessel. This means preventing the hydrogen buildup and risk of deflagration which might cause radioactive emissions in case of core overheating due to breakdown of the cooling system. These hydrogen releases due to radiolysis may take place also because of the nuclear rods exposure in case of lowering down the water level in the cooling water pools with nuclear depleted material found inside the main buildings of the nuclear power plant. Every nuclear power plant should take into consideration the availability of a pool of human resources to be used as a supplementary intervention in catastrophic event. In addition, a cleanup facility building located a few kilometers away from the main reactor facilities, including shelters large enough to host the emergency shifts for extended intervention in case of a nuclear incident. Such an action is recommended when the number of the normal available working shift personnel cannot assure a proper emergency intervention in case of power failure and re-establishing the cooling down capabilities of a possible crippled nuclear reactor due to the twin action of a large-scale tremor and subsequent tsunami event. The endowment of the rescue teams with special equipments and means of intervention in case of emergency situations is essential for an efficient response, increasing the chance for saving lives and reducing the economical impact of the natural disasters, including earthquakes. In the aftermath of the disaster, many persons can be rescued beneath the rubble thanks to the sniffer dogs and high-tech ultrasound equipment both from the national level or foreign emergency teams. The existence of the communication routes through all remote communities within a prone area for natural disaster, including tsunami, is an essential factor for undertaking an efficient response activity in case of a disaster event. For minimizing the pressure of the local community in case of disasters, the existence of an insurance system for the houses and goods against the natural disasters, 
including earthquakes is very efficient. This is due to the indemnity of the affected people, automatically covered by the insurance companies. The financial coverage of the response action will not be affected, in case of producing some damages. Commonly, in the aftermath of an earthquake, the only compensation of the homeless people in the affected areas are the subvention from the state and foreign aid organizations, in order to assure the economical income for a normal social life. Anyway it couldn't cover always integrally the loss, in the absence of a national-wide efficient insurance system. In the hazard-prone areas where a certain disaster is present, the recovery activities are difficult to undertake, for example in arid regions there is the possibility that water tubes are broken triggering major damages. Response teams must be ready to get water lines repaired in short time. In the rehabilitation phase the focus should be put on economical recovery and social sustainability within the affected communities. Therefore long-term intervention development programs have to be set up in the affected areas, for the benefit of the most vulnerable communities, mainly focusing on income-generating projects. The multi-hazard feature of the inhabited areas and population vulnerability, as a result of the economical developing, could worsen the condition of the affected population in case of a natural disaster, superposing the effect of more hazards. A prime task of the international assistance in the affected regions is the strengthening of the capacity to respond to future disasters in the area, because some regions could have been already suffering from the effects of other hazards before the earthquake, or to withstand to the associated hazards of the main event, such as aftershocks, tsunamis, fires due to broken gas pipelines or from the damaged reservoirs of the affected boats or cars carried by the waves into the house's walls, liquefaction and landslides, mud flows, etc. A prompt response activity in case of a natural disaster, including tsunami, is related to the existence of an already implemented, plan of emergency and intervention, at the level of local and central public authorities. It clearly stipulates the competencies and the activities during each phase of the emergency intervention for rehabilitation and clearance of the disaster effect. The plan should be constantly revised in order to assure the updating of the information with the changes in land planning activities at the level of the community, or modifications intervene in the structure of the emergency staff personnel in charge with the response activities. Rescue operators have to count with a lot of destruction and uninhabitable houses thus having to maintain a huge number of refugees over a long period. The response capability in coastal areas, in the case of a tsunami event, should rely on the effectiveness of the early warning system for tsunami, which allows an efficient preparedness measure. In some vulnerable coastal areas the travel time for tsunami to reach the coastal area is very short, for example the Mediterranean region, generally in less than 10 minutes after start, due to relatively shallow and low step offshore bottom morphology. Consequently the period of time until the tsunami alert is initiated should be very short, in relation to an existing efficient alarm capability of the population and the emergency relief crews. Automatic unmanned, anti-radiation proof for humans, crane coupled with long-range powerful water pumps near a water source for spraying at distance large volume of waters, should be available for all nuclear facilities located in the earthquake-prone areas, including tsunamis.